Hello and welcome. My name is Yves Sanford, VCDX203 uh, and also CEO of Comdivision Group. In this session I want to show you how to replace self-signed certificates in VRA 6.x. Um, this basically came as a surprise to me that nearly everything in it is, is expiring after one year and I had to replace uh, them for um, a demo environment I'm using and so I thought I'm going to share that with you. I actually came across this in, in a demo environment of mine. The first thing I figured is that the password of the root user expires after, after one year. So the easiest for that is um, I log in via SSH onto the root box and uh, onto the VCAC appliance, uh, run a chh-m9999 um, um, for the root user and that will help you to get around that. You can also reset the password but it reminds you or it remembers the last 10 one and so you would need to use a complete new one which is also fine. Again this is a demo environment this is not what you are meant to do in a production environment this is just to fix issues you might find in a demo environment which is no longer accessible due to expired certificates. You can easily see that by, by validating the certificate links. So the first thing you need to do is you log into the VCAC appliance itself, um, go to the VCAC settings tab, and then within that go to the SSL tab, and then just tell it to generate the self-signed certificate again, which will replace it for another year. Um, I'm expecting we are going to be on VRA 7 before um, the end of 2017, so um, I might not need this. Otherwise, you might want to actually manually generate a certificate, which is uh, valid a bit longer. Next thing is we need to basically do the same thing again on the uh, Microsoft EES. Uh, so that's where the infrastructure as a service components are living. For that um, similar procedure, you open the IIS manager, go to the main route, um, um, click server certificates, then click uh, create self-signed certificates. It takes a second or two to actually load that. Then you give it the name of the certificate, which should be the same as the host name. It doesn't need to be, but it helps you to identify it. As you can see, it automatically creates a new one. And then you unfold the sites. You click on default websites. And then on the right-hand side, under bindings, you will also see um, um, that you can change the um, by certificate binding for port 443, you click edit, you change the certificate from the old one to the new one, you hit close, and then you restart the web service, and then you're doing the same on the management server, and finally you're also going to remove the server certificate from here as well. One would think that this would be good enough, but um, as both the IAS and the VRA appliance components are linking to each other, we need to relink a bunch of services next. And this was most of the cumbersome process I had to figure out which exact commands are correct. Uh, not necessarily all procedures I found out there on the net are working, so I picked um, the one which actually worked fine for me and we validated that and checked that as well. For that, open the command prompt on the IAS box. Go to the uh, program files x86 folder, uh, VMware, VCAC, server, model manager data cafe. And once you are in that folder, you will be able to run a command which is called vcacconfig.exe. Um, I'm going to resize the window real quick, um, which will make our lives a bit easier. Give me a second to do that. So, ah, not, not, not the screen buffer size. Let's do the window size, 140 and a much higher height. Okay. That was actually too big. Uh, let's do that again and change the sizing to something a bit smaller. This was far too big. Let's just go with 120 20 or something and then we should be good. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is you basically are going to run the VCAC um, config 
command to update the server certificates in the VCAC database. So the command syntax is always the same, vcacconfig.exe, then the command you want to execute, in our case, update server certificates, and then the syntax changes a bit different depending on the accounts, minus D for the database name, minus S for the server name. Some of these commands are actually pretty case sensitive. I'm going to point them out later on. And then you add dash, uh, minus V at the end to be sure that you get verbose export uh, air feedback, which will tell you exactly if it worked or not. If one of these commands does not succeed, there is no value in continuing. Figure out why it didn't succeed, so maybe one of the certificate generations failed. So next one is get server certificates. Um, this is basically going to store um, the server certificate data back into a local um, configuration file. Um, so we run that. And Next thing we have to do is to register or re-register the solution user. So this is basically um, ensuring that the tenant data matches um, with the certificate and the user account and the encryption and everything. So for this, register solution user, URL to the VCAC appliance, um, tenant name, username, password. You can see here it's a demo environment, pretty strong password. Um, so we need to be careful with that. Okay, this takes a second longer. So the next command we are going to run is um, move registration data back to database. Um, I have to run this command in two different ways. I was not really 100% able to figure out why, because in general both of these commands did the same, but there was some weird reason why maybe it doesn't take the data in the first place or something. So we basically rerun the command in two different syntaxes. Um, same command though, but if I didn't do that, I found that on a on a um, on a VMware, a VMware forum and it was a bit of a weird, no one could really explain why, but it seemed that several people had the issue to go through that process uh, this way. Once all these steps are completed, um, we have basically fixed the IAS side of things, so that's the Windows side. So the first thing we are going to do next now is we are going to actually open the services console um, within um, the services console from the uh, Windows system. And then within that services console, we are going to restart all the VCAC services. So we are going to start with the dem orchestrator, then take the dem worker, then take the um, vSphere agent and the um, model, uh, the vCenter, uh, vCloud Automation Center service itself. Um, be aware, I had in several tries on this, I had an issue where the DEM services were not able to restart, also due to the certificate issue. Um, what I had to do then is actually go into Task Manager and manually restart these individual services, but I think um, it depends on the case. So first try to restart them via the services console and if then that doesn't work out then you can still actually go back and do this um, on the other side as well. So vSphere agent. So we have dem orchestrator, dem worker now. The agent takes a second. And then finally, the VCAC service. In our case, due to the certificate issue, it wasn't even started, starting anymore. So if yours um, is up and running, then you might need to restart it. So once all of this is done, we need to re-register the endpoints. Um, this is basically now the other way around. So we basically run commands so that the appliance actually knows how to talk to VCAC. For this one, you need to be very, very careful um, with the syntax of the URLs. 
So the first one uh, we are going to re-register is the user interface um, endpoint. Some web links actually show slash VCAC in a different uh, writing with a lowercase v and CAC uppercase. If you do that, you will run into some nasty error 500 and 404 pages while, um, while using the user interface and also while provisioning um, blueprints and stuff like that. So better stay away from that. All lowercase worked perfectly fine for me and that was also confirmed by a few other people. The next one we are going to uh, relink is the VCAC repository. So again, VCAC config, register endpoint, minus minus endpoint address. And now it's the same base address with slash repository at the end. Um, be careful on this one, it shouldn't have a slash at the end. Again, this sounds a bit weird, but those um, URLs are pretty case sensitive, pretty syntax sensitive um, from what I tried. Um, it might depend on the individual version, but um, in my case I had several weird issues if I didn't actually use exactly these URL types. So we have user interface, we have repository, next is the uh, W API, so the WAPI. So we are going to do that one next. So again, VCAC config, register endpoint, endpoint address. And then we give it the WAPI address. Again, as you can see, a lot of commands just for an expired self-signed certificate, but without actually re-registering and fixing all these issues, you will see tons of different scenarios with VRA causing you issues. Some of them are not necessarily showing up easily at the beginning. Some of them take a while to see that something doesn't work the way you would expect it to work. But um, as I said, it's, it's a weird scenario we have seen in, in several cases. So once the VAPI is actually confirmed and, and validated, the last one we are going to do is we are going to run this against the status um, endpoint. Um, this is just actually for the system to validate the other one is up. And a few other status informations are maintained over that as well. And once this one is completed, we actually can go and um, re start the services on the VRA appliance as well, which is pretty straightforward. We just again use putty. And then within putty we just have to run the um, commands again. Um, just in case, before I leave the screen, um, if you want to take a screenshot, this screen actually, so you need to pause and then take a screenshot because you have all commands on one screen now. Okay, on the VRA appliance, service space VCAC minus server restart. Um, it takes a bit and now comes the not so interesting part. We have to wait for these different Java processes all to start and be working again. So for that, what I always suggest to people is you just kick off the top command. And the rule is relatively simple. If for longer than 10 seconds, none of the Java processes is consuming more than 10 or 20% CPU, you should be good to go to validate your system again. So we moved forward a bit here. Um, so as you can see, CPU from the Java processes and everything else is down to zero now. So the next step we are going to do now is we are going to back and go back into the, oh, there it is again, but it's gone, I think. Yeah, it stays down now. So we are going to go to the um, user interface Ah, not that one. Um, 
Oh yeah, that one first. Um, we let's check first if all services are registered again. So as we can see here, we have 22 services again. VCO in this case is not registered because we are not running VCAO on this specific uh, system within that appliance and this box. Uh, we are running it actually as a separate system. So let's see if VCAC likes us again. So go to the appliance slash VCAC. Yes, we want to leave the admin interface. Again, new certificates, so we need to have to confirm them. Done that, done that. Okay, so now we log in with a tenant or infrastructure admin, whatever actually works for us, so that we see the infrastructure tab. And again, it takes a minute or two until everything is loaded because we just restarted basically every VCAC component. Those of you working with it for a bit longer know that from there. It usually takes a few seconds here and there to start uh, build up everything. And um, we, I think most of us have learned the lesson that uh, trying to push it too hard and actually trying to move it to move quicker or different screens is not going to help you in any way. So we can see home screen working, so the basic appliance seems to be all good again. And then we are going to switch to the infrastructure tab and let's just see if that comes back as well. Because if that works, then we should be good to go. So what I typically suggest is once infrastructure is loaded, um, then take a quick look at the blueprints as well, just to see if it can still populate data from the vSphere agent. Oh, I should replace my demo licenses in this one, but yeah. that's not part of this video. Okay. So let's wait for the final confirmation that the blueprints are there. Blueprints are there. So I hope this um, helps a few people out, of there, out there. And um, yeah, again, watch out for more videos. I know it's been a while, but I had to get my VCDX done. So again, thank you for watching. My name is Yves Sanford and I'm the uh, VCDX203 and CEO of Comdivision Group. If you want to reach out to me, uh, you can find me on Twitter um, at my Twitter handle at Yves Sanford. Thank you and uh, hear you and see you next time.